I welcome you to Plymouth Congregational Church on this seventh Sunday of Easter. Uh, we will be worshiping uh, all around our beautiful campus, and I hope you find that it moves you and makes you feel part of Plymouth's family wherever you are. Actually, we find that you have people listening around the world, so welcome. Last week, I want to give a special thanks to the members of our mission board who put together our Can Do Sunday. We haven't done that in a while, so that felt really good to do that again. I thank over 30 cars for coming and bringing food. I want to thank our mission board members and the Boy Scout Troop 7 uh, for helping us to unload, then sort all the food, and then repack it. And our mission board members delivered it to Coconut Grove Crisis Food Pantry this week. Our preschool had a wonderful celebration at the end of the year. We had each class come individually and get to say goodbye to their teachers and the staff and collect their belongings in our driveway and honk and celebrate. So we had a drive-through last day at the preschool. Strange but beautiful. Um, what we're trying to do this coming up week is I want you to get into your homes and start cleaning and finding those treasures because next Sunday, the This and That Shop will be open from 1 to 2.30 in Pilgrim House to receive your contributions and your treasures. Uh, and so they will get those things ready for when they can reopen the shop. So we look forward to that and we invite you to come and support the shop and all that it's able to do. Wherever you are this morning or whenever you're watching this, I hope you feel the beauty of this campus and the faith of this congregation and that it touches your heart and that together our hearts are open to worship. Let us worship. This morning we have another graduating senior liturgist and it's Allie Velasquez. Um, it's a sort of special weekend for her to be able to serve this way. Uh, we're dedicating this to her grandpa, uh, Wally Reichardt, who joined the Navy in 1959 and served on the nuclear submarine, the USS Scorpion. Uh, Allie's graduating from New World and will be attending FSU in the fall. Come and worship the living God who created us, knows us, calls us by name, and loves us. Let us worship the Lord. Let us pray. Heart of our hearts, in Christ we see your heart, your compassion, and your steadfast faithfulness. 
may your love and mercy be upon us today. Create in us a clean heart, O God. Renew a right spirit within us. Grant us hope and humility for the living of these days. We ask these things in the name of your beloved Son, who taught us to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Our first reading this morning, we're doing this in Plymouth Hall, where we normally have our Bible study at 8.30 a.m. before worship, a perfect place where we talk a lot about the Bible. Our first reading comes from Acts, the book of Acts, chapter 1, and it's the seventh Sunday of Easter. Often this day is also celebrated as Ascension Sunday, and as you'll see in this reading, Jesus ascends. Acts chapter 1, verses 3 through 9 and 12 through 14. After his suffering, Jesus presented himself to them and gave many convincing proofs that he was alive. He appeared to them over a period of 40 days and spoke about the kingdom of God. On one such occasion, while he was eating with them, he gave them this command, Do not leave Jerusalem, but wait for the gift my father promised, which you have heard me speak about. For John baptized with water, but in the few days you will be baptized with the Holy Spirit. Then they gathered around him and asked him, Lord, are you at this time going to restore the kingdom of Israel? He said to them, It is not for you to know the times or dates the Father has set by his own authority, but you will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes on you, and you will be my witness in Jerusalem and in all Judea and Samaria and to the ends of the earth. After he said this, he was taken up before their very eyes, and a cloud hid him from their sight. Then the apostles returned to Jerusalem from the hill called the Mount of Olives, a Sabbath day's walk from the city. When they arrived, they went upstairs to the room where they were staying. Those present were Peter and John, James and Andrew, Philip and Thomas, Bartholomew and Matthew, James, son of Alphaeus, and Simon the Zealot, and Judas, son of James. They all joined together constantly in prayer, along with the women and Mary, the mother of Jesus, and with his brothers. The word of God for the people of God. Good morning, everybody. Here we are on the chancel steps where we normally have our children's moment together. Miss you all. I usually wear a robe in the children's moment, but today I've decided not to because I want to change my tie. It's a special day, and I want to have a tie that fits the day. Now, this is one of my favorites. It's got palm trees on it. We bought it at the this and that thrift shop, but I want to change my tie for the day. And so, show you some of the thoughts I had about other ties. Here's one I thought about wearing. It's got, if you can see closely, it's got little musical notes. I thought, wouldn't it be nice to honor the beautiful music and the creativity of Jerry and Chris and the choirs, children's and adults choir, the chancel choir, and also Jim Hacker today, and the music during our time where we've been videoing. That's a good idea, but I have another idea for today. Here's an, another tie. This is my high school tie from many years ago. And I thought, you know what, that's appropriate because we have so many graduating seniors who we're honoring, whether high school or college or even preschool, whatever it might be. Another good idea. I think for another day, though, because I have something else in mind. Here's another good idea. This is a red, white, and blue tie, perfect for Memorial Day and this, this, our national celebration today. Red, white, and blue, good idea. But I have something else in mind for today. 
the tie I have in mind and that I'm going to change into is my Easter tie. Because today is the seventh Sunday of Easter during the season we call Easter Tide. Seven weeks. It's Easter today. Now, one thing we know is that each Easter we celebrate the resurrection of Christ. Well, the truth is all seven Sundays of Easter we celebrate the resurrection of Christ. But truthfully, every Sunday we celebrate that. And so I am going to change into this tie for the rest of worship, but I just might wear it some other Sunday during the year because every Sunday we celebrate the resurrection. Let us pray. Gracious God, we thank you. We thank you for all that you have done for us. Your love that you showed us in Christ, but your love that you show us in so many ways. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. And now I'm going to change my tie.
second lesson this morning comes to us from the Gospel of Matthew, and we continue with our series with Jesus' Sermon on the Mount. Matthew chapter 6, verses 16 through 18. And Jesus said, And whenever you fast, do not look dismal like the hypocrites, for they disfigure their faces so as to show others that they are fasting. Truly, I tell you, they have received their reward. But when you fast, put oil on your head and wash your face so that your fasting may be seen not by others, but by your Father who is in secret. And your Father who sees in secret will reward you. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Let us pray. Loving God who knows us in our innermost hearts, we ask that you might illumine our hearts that we might hear your word for us this day. Amen. They met a man who spoke to their hearts and their way of life turned upside down. Dusty miles of walking and hours of talking, conversations with Jesus that challenged their way of thinking and opened their hearts. On that fateful Friday, two pieces of wood, three rusty nails, and great hardness of heart. And the hope in their hearts was turned upside down. In the darkness before dawn, Mary went with balm for his dead body and encountered an empty place. And the Lord, the master of surprise, turned emptiness upside down. Our risen Lord sent her to his frightful followers with astounding news that their frightened hearts dismissed as foolishness. And then came the 40 days. The 40 days in which the risen Christ came to them, walking with them again, conversations with them again. Imagine if since Easter, which in these strange days seems like about a year ago, what would the last 40 days have been like if Jesus came and had breakfast with you? That would be a very different kind of lockdown. And then just when you're getting used to the idea, although I'm not sure we could ever really get used to the idea of keeping company with the risen Christ, imagine that those 40 days came to a spectacular end this past Thursday, seeing the risen Christ ascend into heaven. Imagine being told Go back to Jerusalem, the scene of the crime, a place of danger for them. And being told, do not leave. Go back to that room and wait. They had seen the risen Christ ascend to heaven, hearts lifted by such a miraculous triumph, and I'm sure hearts sinking, because no matter how beautiful they are, goodbyes always break our hearts. Jesus told them not to leave Jerusalem. And so here they sit. The image is pretty stark. Well over a dozen men and women waiting in that room. So there's zero possibility of social distancing there. But there would have been every possibility for emotional distance between the disciples. Because into that room, each of their hearts brings what their eyes had seen their bodies had endured, and what their souls had experienced. Fear, awe, humility, gratitude, joy, hope, loss, grief, confusion, and now apprehension. Sound familiar? Do not leave. Wait. For us, simple words like open and close have taken on a whole new meaning. And the best ways forward are yet to unfold. The challenge is there's no map to unfold, to show us the way forward. We have to discover the way. And just as Jesus had work for his disciples, more than telling people who Jesus was and what Jesus did, more than telling people the gospel, he called them to be pilgrims, to go out into the world, to discover their way, to embody the gospel. We are disciples. We are pilgrims. And Jesus gives us the exact same work to do, to incarnate, to embody the gospel. 
And friends, I believe that in the midst of all of these strange days that we're living, we have the hearts of disciples. We have the hearts of pilgrim people. And the challenge before our hearts is discovering the faithful ways in difficult days to be embodiers and incarnators of the gospel. What's happening to our hearts? It feels to me like there's a kind of hardness of heart creeping into our conversations. We cannot let that take hold of us. I've had people tell me, we have had only 96,000 deaths in our country. Can we put this another way? 95,000, 96,000 people created in the image of God have died, leaving behind exhausted people who cared for them and the grief-stricken people who love them. The Bureau of Labor Statistics reported that in April, the number of unemployed in our country was 14.7%, and particularly in a city like Miami and throughout our state, the hospitality industry was more horrifying at something around 30%. Can we put this another way? Millions of people created in the image of God, more people since the Great Depression, are not able to get up in the morning with the dignity and purpose of supporting themselves and the people they love livelihoods, businesses created with hope and sacrifice by people created in the image of God are hanging by a thread. What did the disciples do while they were in their lockdown in that room in Jerusalem? Perhaps all of those miles and all of those conversations and all of those words from the word made flesh were treasure for their hearts. Jesus told them they would be his witnesses, that God had sacred work for them to do, sacred purpose for their lives. But they did not know how or when. They did have his inexplicable promise that God would give them what they need to do that sacred work. The power of the Holy Spirit would be upon them. What must they have been thinking? Here we are, stuck together in this room, waiting. Who are we for the Lord to give us this great task? Who are we to live into a challenge this great? Perhaps they remembered this portion of Jesus' sermon. A word of comfort delivered in a word of rebuke. Because you see, my friends, the Lord is not interested in our masquerades. When we put our hearts in lockdown, spiritually distancing from our true selves, from one another, and from God. Because you see, God knows us. God searches our secret heart. And so here we are, in this room, and in whatever room you are in. The Spirit of God knows every nook where you feel stuck. And every cranny of our COVID-crushed spirits. And God is not interested in our pretending, our posturing, our self-righteousness, because my friends, discipleship is not a sideshow. Put oil on your head, for you are known and anointed with God's love. Wash all the pretense from your face. God knows who you are and loves you. And from inside that crowded room, they showed us what to do in trust and in truth, open our hearts to God and accept the sacred work that God is setting before us to embody Christ for one another and for the world. So how did they begin? They all joined together constantly in prayer. My friends, in these weeks after Easter and as we prepare for Pentecost, Jesus came and nothing will be the same. Jesus went and nothing will be the same. And Jesus leaves it to us to bring that truth to light every day. 
It's Memorial Weekend. This is the weekend where we always watch They Were Expendable. It's my favorite war movie. Starring the wonderful, my beloved Robert Montgomery, who actually drove ambulances in France until the Dunkirk invasion. Then in December 1941, he joined the US Navy. He served in the invasion of Normandy. He became a lieutenant commander and he was awarded a Bronze Star. And here he is in this film about a PT boat squadron during the Battle of the Philippines and the heartache and sacrifice of the garrisons of Bataan and Corregidor. This weekend, but every day, we should honor heartache and sacrifice and humility and courage and steadfast love and faithfulness. And so, it is always good to begin with the truth. Hard truths, beautiful truths, always begin with the truth as best we can see it. All of those things, heartache, sacrifice, endurance, humility, courage, and steadfast love and faithfulness will be needed in the days to come. Because we are all in that room with those disciples. Battles have been lost and so much has already been sacrificed so many hearts are weary, and there are long days of challenge and some very stark choices yet before us. What is needed, what's possible, what is best, and best for whom? It's not exaggeration to say that there is existential threat to our health, to our economic life, and to our hearts. Jesus lived in existential danger, and he says to us, take heart, do not be afraid. Our Lord can teach us and help us to live in existential danger. And as we pilgrims make our way forward, if we are to embody, if we are to incarnate the gospel, no one is expendable. No one's health, no one's livelihood, no one's hard work and sacrifice is expendable. And yet most of us are running on emotional fumes, stuck on the ship offshore or stuck on shore needing the ship to come in. This is why we do well to hear the word from Jesus' sermon and serve the Lord in humility. This is why we do well to begin by praying constantly. We celebrate Pentecost next week, and believe me, we need it now more than ever. A reminder that the Lord sends us out baptized in the Holy Spirit to light the lamps and lift them up. And so where do we begin? In this last Sunday of Easter, the best place to begin is right there. When we discover our duty of care is draining us, come to the cross and discover an oasis of God's sacrificial love that can never be drained. We're, in, we're impatient with all that's unresolved in our hearts when we're poor in spirit, when we hunger and thirst, whether we're wounded or well. My friends, come to the cross there is healing balm here. People of the word, when we speak with one another, come to the cross. Remember Jesus' conversations that challenged his disciples' way of thinking and opened their hearts. When our conversations take place at the foot of the cross, we allow space because God carves it out for fear to be heard by faithful hearts for challenge to be embraced with hopeful hearts, for wisdom to be shared by loving hearts. Here, kneel in silence long enough for the Lord to speak and for our hearts to listen. We can't hug one another. Come to the cross and fall into God's arms. Behind our masks, our smiles may be concealed and our words of love may be muffled. Come to the cross. Here there is no masquerade. Come 
as you are. Here, God's love and truth and beauty is revealed for all of us and offered to all of us. My friends, lift up your hearts. Be of good courage. But begin this day by having a little heart for your own heart. Amen. Let us join together in prayer. Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, Creator, Sustainer, and Redeemer, we come before you during this strangest of times in our lives, a time of waiting, waiting patiently, but also waiting eagerly. We start with gratitude. We start with gratitude, trusting that in you, there is always hope. And this day we pray in gratitude for the many healthcare workers and scientists and doctors and other folks on the front lines helping us get through this, this time. We pray also asking specifically, because you tell us to be specific, we ask for a cure. Help us, help in human ingenuity to come up with a cure for coronavirus and also a vaccine. We pray for spiritual and emotional sustenance during this time. And we pray for a safe, a safe return to normalcy, whatever that might mean. Including we pray for our economy and especially for those who have lost work. We pray also for our graduating seniors and congratulate them and know that what they are doing in the rest of their lives, that you will be with them. And we also pray for our nation, that our leaders will make wise decisions and that even, and so that we as, as, as Americans will see that even with our many differences, that we will realize, maybe especially now, that we really do need each other. And on this Memorial Day weekend, we pray especially for those who have served this great nation. And now God, because you know us by name, we bring to you by name our prayers first aloud and then in our hearts, beginning with the family of John Castellano in his untimely passing. We pray for Natalie and her healing. We pray for Chris in Connecticut. We pray for the Willie family and for Pastor Chris and Andrea, his wife Andrea, and all of the people of the New Vision Ministries in Marsh Harbor, Abacos, Abaco Islands and Bahamas. And now we lift, bring up to you the longings of our hearts. God, we ask you to hear our prayers, both spoken and unspoken. We need you, God, and we love you. And we pray these things in your son's most holy name. 
Amen. As we've been videoing worship, we have the camera showing so many different parts of the campus. Right now I'm in front of the church office called Mead House. And it's where my office is, the Pastor Moira's, and many of our offices are here, although we're mostly working remotely. But the work of the church continues. The work of the staff, including the team that is videoing these worship services, but also the staff doing many other things. But of course, not just the staff. The, church, the work of the church continues through our lay leaders. We just had our council meeting this past Tuesday, the weekend, the week before we had our trustees and we had our board of outreach and mission and our many other boards and committees meeting together. We also have a committee that's been convening for the past few weeks called our reopening committee, which is considering the how, how and when we will get back together and worship. Also the many ministries. Last Sunday we collected food for the Coconut Grove Crisis Food Pantry. Next Sunday we're collecting items for the thr the, our thrift shop, the this and that thrift shop. This is Plymouth being Plymouth. This is the church being the church. We invite you to support these efforts and ask you to give back as best you can.
friends, on a Sunday when we honor and remember the sacrifice of so many men and women in our armed services and those of our allies, we also remember that we are loved by a God who loves us sacrificially. So may we be people of loving sacrifice and people who remember. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord lift up his countenance and give you peace. Amen.